Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. I'm going to start off by apologizing for my hiatus as of late. Business and life has gotten in the way, keeping me from posting some videos. But I promise I have a lot of spectacular content coming up in the coming months. And it's going to be concentrating on flash photography. I have a lot of cool stuff that I have in mind, things that I want to do, things that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. So uh, I've, this has definitely been the number one most requested set of videos is Flash. So hold on to your hats. Here it comes. It's going to be a tidal wave of it. And you're going to enjoy it. You're going to learn a lot from it. And as always, keep asking your questions and uh, put out your comments. What, other, you know, what do you want to hear? What do you want to see? What do you want me to talk about? Requests, any of that stuff. Make sure you're putting it out there. All right. So... Uh, by the way, before I get into this video, make sure you check out the flash exposure video so that you understand how ISO and shutter speed and aperture work in relation to your flash so uh, you can understand what I'm talking about here. And uh, I'm not going to go into those basics in this part. Go back, watch that video so that you understand that first. All right. So these photos, before I look at these, before I zoom into these photos, these photos were actually taken during a class, during a, a local class that I uh, was teaching. And so that's why the clothing, all that stuff really doesn't match. It wasn't like meant to be a bride and groom kind of a shoot or a couple shoot, anything like that. It was just meant to be a proof of concept. There were other photographers that I was teaching at the time. And these were two of the photographers. It just happened to be what they were wearing and what they were doing. So, um, just an idea that I had that I wanted to show off and to teach them. And now I'm going to turn around and be able to teach you with it. So, first photo. Set the scene here a little bit. This bridge is probably about 250 or 300 feet away from where I'm standing, from where I took the photos. That's the first problem. Real long distance. All right. Second problem. How are we going to modify the light so that we can get it how we want it? All right. First problem, fortunately, was solved by the fact that this little sensor right here on the side of the SB900, and I forget where it's at on the 800. I didn't grab my 800. Anyway, um, I was actually using this as the remote flash. The 900 is pretty is on the side, and what I ended up doing is the flash is actually on the right side of the picture. I guess maybe it should be over here. I don't know. Uh, as I'm looking at the picture, it's over here on the right. <laughs> as you can see, it's coming in. Flashes on the right, shadows on the left. Uh, I had that flash pointing toward this little sensor, sorry, pointing towards the camera. So um, fortunately, even at that distance, it was actually dark enough outside that that sensor actually still picked up my um, SB800, which was on camera. All right, that took care of my first problem. The second problem that as you can see here when we zoom in, we still have a lot of flash hitting all this stuff down here, uh, all the way down onto the bridge, onto their pants, and that's not quite what I wanted. All right, not what I was going for. I wanted a more concentrated flash. So what did I do? I relied on the zoom feature, let's turn it back on, of the SB900. And I think just about all modern flashes have this right now. If not, you could just put a modifier on the end of your flash and that would end up doing the same thing. But fortunately, it's built into this one. When we hit the zoom button, this zooms and I zoomed it in. I want to say it's probably to 135 or maybe 180. Uh, but anyway, you can zoom in and by zooming that head, it makes that pattern of light smaller and smaller and smaller which is a really cool effect, and I use that effect a lot in a, in a bunch of my images lately. So, in fact, I used it on the wedding that I photographed on Saturday night a couple times. So, um, yeah, I used that to concentrate the light so that it was just on their faces. All right, first photo, proof of concept, does the flash go that far? Will my SB800 over that 300-foot distance or so fire the other one? Absolutely. So it's just a random set of exposure. That's what we have here. Second image. All right. No flash. Turned off the flash. And what I always recommend is that you take one ambient light photo first and then add in your flash to, in order to mix it in to figure out what your exposure settings are. When you're new to flash, when you haven't done a lot with it, 
this is the way you want to go. You want to be adding, you want to shoot that available light photo first. This is the scene. And so I was at ISO 1600, 1 200th of a second at f2.8. All right. I was shooting with my Nikon D3 and I had the 70 to 200 f2.8 lens on there. First photo, normal exposure, um, nothing special, nothing special in the histogram, kind of flat. Again, uh, these are really unedited. So um, that's number one. Number two, wanted to darken it a little bit. This first one, a little too bright for me because I knew that my main light was going to be that flash. So I wanted to darken my ambient. That's what I did here. I went down, went from ISO 1600 in this image down to ISO 800 in this image. All right. Still 1 200th of a second at f2.8. Now we, let's see, did another one down to 500. Here's where we start adding the flash. Look at this image, no flash. I'll zoom in for you here. Okay, no flash there. Now we'll go to the next image and we add that flash back in. Now I don't remember what the power setting was of the flash. If I had to guess, it was a good distance away. Uh, it was actually over at the end of this bridge, probably 20 feet from them. So I'm going to guess it was probably um, probably at 1 32nd power or 1 16th power on the SB900, obviously on a stand. And so um, light's a little more concentrated, and I'm starting to look at it. Okay, how's the balance there? You know, what do I want to do with that? So um, that's where we're at now. We're adding that in. Now I start posing, okay? I... And I'm looking at the flash power once more. Hey, that's pretty nice. Always want to put the female, a little out of focus, but that's okay. Uh, always want to put the female in the better light. This, uh, the male is actually split light, where we have the flash only on one side and shadow on the other side. But we have a Rembrandt or a little bit nicer pattern of light on her face, thinning her face, and it overall looks good. Uh, next photo. Um, Again, just posing, talking to them, keeping them interested. Don't know why they weren't smiling, but there's a smile, okay? And we're getting to that point where, why did you go black? There you go, okay? So flash is looking good. Maybe I would have adjusted the head up and down a little bit. Maybe I adjusted their pose the way I wanted to stand, the way I wanted to do this or that. Uh, but basically, the exposure's there. I know where I want it. I have the... The tree is nice and super saturated. I have a good amount of light on them. Um, this would make a great black and white if he didn't have this Dr. Pepper t-shirt, red Dr. Pepper t-shirt on, <laughs> which I could edit in Photoshop, but you guys know me well enough that I'm just not a big Photoshopper. Uh, I'd rather do it right in camera. So maybe someday I'll go back to this location and redo it. But hopefully you get the idea of, of what I was going for here and get the concept it's first set your exposure your ambient exposure then add your flash difficult shot here because we wanted to concentrate the flash again with the zoom in the head and we also had um, cut the light levels were coming down it was relatively dark it was later in the day in the springtime what time of day was it here 651 in the springtime on in May so it was probably going to be dark around 7.15. So it was, it was definitely getting down. And I think it might have been overcast too. So, it, you know, it makes for an interesting shot. So questions about this, any comments, I'd love to hear them as always. Um, flash stuff, flash, flash, flash. It's coming, guys. Like a train coming down the tracks. There's a lot of it coming. I promise you. Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Thanks, guys. See ya.